All right, we'll now finish our Chapter 5's coverage of stereochemistry with a couple more lecture installments. After today's lecture, you guys should be able to use the RS system in naming compounds, determine if a given compound is meso, and identify the stereochemical outcome of certain addition reactions with alkenes. Now you should note that we are going to skip sections 5.9 and 10 and sections 5.14 through 18 from our text. We'll also skip section 5.11's coverage of erythro and 3O and our chapter 5 coverage of Fisher projections simply because we're going to be covering those in a later chapter. So let's go ahead and begin with a lecture problem. I want you to name the following. Now before you attempt to do it, I'm of course going to show you how, starting with example A. Looking at example A, if we were ignoring the stereochemistry and imagining that all of the bonds were just drawn flat, how in the world would we name this molecule? Well, of course we're going to begin by numbering all of the carbons, either left to right or right to left. Because we have two chlorine substituents, and they're the only substituents, the direction that we choose for numbering should be the direction that gives those two substituents the lowest number. Hence, we're going to actually number from right to left, as shown here. You'll note that this is a molecule that has five carbons in its parent chain. Thus, its parent name should be pentane. You'll also note that at carbons two and three, there are chlorines. Hence, if we were naming this with all of the knowledge that we've learned about IUPAC naming up to this point, we would name it 2,3-dichloropentane. Now we're done, right? Wrong. You see, in this chapter, we've learned how to use the RS naming system to specify the stereochemistry at each of these two stereocenters, the one to the right and the one to the left. Now using the techniques that I outlined in our previous lectures, we can determine that the stereochemistry of the stereocenter at the right on carbon 2 is R, and of carbon 3 is also R. Now if you aren't sure about that, go ahead and pause the video now and give that a try. Now because this molecule has two stereocenters, we actually do have to include the R configuration in the name. The way we do that is by naming the molecule this. 2R, 3R, 2,3-dichloropentane. That is the full and correct IUPAC name for this molecule. I'll give you the chance to attempt to name the remaining two from our previous slide on your own. But this brings us to another problem in which we're given a name and asked to draw the structure. It says, draw the perspective formula of 2R, 3S, 3-bromo-2-butanol. Now, the way I would do this is I would begin at the parent name, butanol. Because it's butanol, we know that it has to be a molecule that has four carbons in its main chain, like this. The next thing we need to do is number our chain. We could do this either going from left to right or right to left. For some reason that I can't really explain, I felt like doing it from right to left. The next thing that we note is that this number two in front of the name butanol indicates that this alcohol, butanol's OH group, is coming off of carbon two. So I'm going to draw, floating in the air, an OH group adjacent to carbon two. You'll also note that we have a bromine substituent at carbon three, as indicated by this part of the name, three bromo. So I'm going to draw a bromine floating above carbon three. What about this 2R and 3S part of the name? Well, that tells me what the stereochemistry is at carbon 2 and carbon 3. Thus, at this point, I have to draw a wedged bond or a dashed bond going to the OH and the BR. And I have to choose those bonds to be whatever would give me 2R and 3S as the configurations at those stereocenters. Starting at the OH, which is at carbon 2, I have placed an initial guess by putting a wedged bond here. In the name, it tells me that that configuration has to be R. Is it indeed R? My OH has my highest priority, the branch to the left has the second highest priority, and this CH3-methyl group has the third highest priority. As I trace from 1 to 2 to 3, it is indeed clockwise, which is R. After looking closely at the bond I need to draw from carbon 3 to the bromine, I've determined that I need to put a dashed bond. The bromine has the highest priority, the branch going to the right has the second highest priority, and the methyl has the third highest priority. 
Tracing from 1 to 2 to 3, it looks like it's clockwise. However, because my lowest priority group, a hydrogen, would actually be coming off of this towards us, that is, with a wedged bond, if I were staring at this from the back side of the molecule, the direction going from the bromine to this branch to the methyl would actually be counterclockwise. And thus, as drawn here, this is an S configuration. So this molecule is 2R3S, 3-bromo, 2-butanol. If you don't believe me, please take the time to reevaluate it and make sure that that is correct. I now want to introduce you to this concept of meso compounds. If you have a molecule like A, shown here, that happens to have a line of symmetry going down the middle of it, then it is a chiral, which means that it doesn't rotate plain polarized light. Compounds like A are called meso compounds. Meso compounds in enantiomers actually aren't different. Now let me explain what I'm talking about. If I were to take compound A and draw what looks like its mirror image, that is, its enantiomer, which I've drawn here, you'll notice that its mirror image looks exactly the same as compound A itself. You might remember me telling you in our earlier discussion that an enantiomer is a non-superimposable mirror image molecule. Is this enantiomer a non-superimposable mirror image? Absolutely not. You could take this mirror image and lay it down right on top of molecule A and everything would line up exactly the same. But why in the world is that? The reason is because molecule A has something called a line of symmetry. That is, you can draw a line directly down the middle of it and you'll see that everything on the left side of A is the mirror image of everything on the right side of A. So what's the take home? The take home is, if you have any kind of molecule and you can draw a straight line down it anywhere, and have the left side of it look like the mirror image of the right side of it, then that compound is meso. Meso compounds do not have enantiomers because if you draw the mirror image of them, the mirror image molecule is completely superimposable with the molecule that you started with. Hence, meso compounds are achiral, meaning that they do not rotate plane polarized light. Does that make sense? Well, let's test your knowledge by looking at a few more examples. Starting with these. Are the following compounds meso? Now, I realize that I've given you probably some easy ones, but that's how I like to start out. Looking at this molecule to the left, we can see that if we draw a line of symmetry directly down the middle of it, everything that's on the left side of that line looks like the mirror image of everything that's on the right side of the line. Thus, if you were to draw this molecule's enantiomer, it would actually look exactly like the original molecule itself. Is this compound meso? Absolutely. That means that this compound is also achiral. In other words, if you threw it in a polarimeter, it would not rotate plane polarized light. By similar argument, you can see that the molecule over here to the right also has a line of symmetry going right down the middle of it. It is a meso compound and hence is achiral and would not rotate plane polarized light. Let's take a look at a more challenging compound, this one right here. Is it meso? Well, let me try to draw a line right down the middle of it. Does that look like a line of symmetry? In other words, does everything that's drawn to the left of that line look like the mirror image of everything that's drawn to the right of that line? Well, I hope you can see that the answer is kind of no. It doesn't really look like a meso compound. But does that mean that it really isn't? <laughs> well, this one's kind of tricky. Let me show you why. Now, as you know, all single bonds can rotate freely. The way this molecule is drawn, and it's drawn in a way to try and trick us, I guess, everything that's to the right of our arbitrary line of symmetry does not look like the mirror image of everything drawn to the left. However, I want to point out one thing. If you were to rotate this bond, that is, rotate everything around three-dimensionally so that your bromine were pointing out and towards us and the hydrogen were pointing down away from us and this methyl group, this CH3, were actually in the plane of the screen and pointing out where the bromine is, you would actually see that this molecule can be rotated around to look like this.
Now, if you don't believe me, please take the time to build a model and make sure that that is true. Now we ask, does this molecule at the right have a line of symmetry? It absolutely does. You'll note that everything to the left of that line is the mirror image of everything to the right of that line. Thus, this compound is indeed meso. It doesn't look meso the way it was originally drawn, but we have to have the ability in our minds to rotate all of the appendages over here to the right in order to ensure that they are indeed the mirror image of everything to the left. Now there is an alternative way of doing this. If you were to take the time to assign R or S stereochemistry to each stereocenter, the one at the left and the one at the right, you would see that the one at the left has an S configuration and the one at the right has an R configuration. Thus, if you don't want to take the time to rotate the appendage over here to the right in your mind to see that it is indeed the mirror image of the appendage to the left, you can very simply determine that the stereocenter at the left is S, the stereocenter at the right is R, and each of these stereocenters are bonded to the same four appendages. Thus, these two individual stereocenters in this compound are indeed mirror images of each other. As a result, this molecule is meso, meaning that it is achiral and will not rotate plane polarized light. From a practical standpoint, you could imagine that this is kind of like having a molecule with two stereocenters that are indeed enantiomers of each other, all embedded in a single molecule. One enantiomer might rotate plane polarized light in one direction by a certain amount, but the other enantiomer, which is present in the exact same amount in the same molecule, would negate that rotation by rotating the light by the exact same amount in the opposite direction. Hence, once again, this compound, which is meso, is achiral and will not have any net rotation of plane polarized light. That brings us to our final example in this subject. Is this compound meso? Well, as we draw a line of symmetry right down the middle, you'll note that the stuff that's to the left of that line does not look like the mirror image of the stuff that's to the right of that line. Now, in our previous example, that happened to be the case as the molecule was drawn. However, we noted that we could rotate the appendages on the right side of that molecule and indeed see that they were the mirror image of the stuff located to the left of that line of symmetry. But in this molecule, is that the case? It's not. Because this molecule is a ring and you cannot freely rotate a single bond in a ring the way you can a non-ringed single bond, there's never going to be a scenario in which you can get this chlorine and this hydrogen to be rotated around so that they will look like the mirror image of the chlorine and the hydrogen over here to the left. Thus, this compound is not meso, is chiral, and will rotate plane polarized light. Now, if you don't believe me, please take the time to build a model of this compound and ensure, indeed, that you can't rotate these bonds around to make what appears at the right side of our line of symmetry to be the mirror image of the stuff that appears at the left side. So that brings us to this challenging question. Can you name the following molecule? Obviously, the parent name would begin by being a cyclopentane because I have a five-membered all-carbon ring. Because it has two alcohols, it would be a diol, or better said, a cyclopentane diol. The two OHs, if we number in the direction that gives them each the lowest number possible, would be located at carbons 1 and 3. So I would call this a 1,3 cyclopentane diol, or something to that effect. The reason that I throw this molecule at you right now is because it begs the question, do I need to specify each stereocenter as being R or S in my name? Well, you'll note that this molecule has a line of symmetry. That is, everything to the left side of that line looks like the mirror image of everything to the right side of that line. Because it has a line of symmetry, this molecule is completely meso. Hence, you don't have to denote each of these perceived stereocenters as being R or S. Because these two hydroxy groups are both pointing in the same direction up, you can just name this as cis cyclopentane 1, 3 diol. As it turns out, if you draw the perceived opposite molecule, that is, with both of the, these OHs going down, if they had dashed bonds, you could take that molecule and flip it upside down like a pancake 
and you'd note that it looks exactly the same as this molecule. Thus, the cis cyclopentane 1,3-diol with both OHs going up is exactly the same as the cis cyclopentane 1,3-diol with both OHs going down. Now you might ask, what about the trans? What if I had one OH going up and the other going down, either one way or the other way? Would that molecule be meso? Absolutely not. So would I have to designate each of the stereocenters in that molecule as being R or S? Yes, I would. That seems like a good place to stop for now. We'll move on to our next video in which I will continue and finish our discussion from Chapter 5's coverage of stereochemistry.